Today is going to be a quick introduction into convergent modeling and what it is inside of NX. Now here I have an STL. If I go into my view and I go facet edges, you can see there's my STL. This STL is imported in the standard way. I can go file, import, STL. Now, this is a legacy model, so I've had this model imported in pre-NX11. So when I did the initial import, I did not have the option of creating a convergent body. Now, as you can see, I have a facet body output type. I have, J, I have NX, JT, and convergent. If I import as an NX or a JT, these are the typical methods that I had previously. Now, if I import as a convergent, I have a lot more capability and things that I can do with that STL. The whole purpose of the convergent modeling is to be able to take STLs and make them usable with solids, surfaces, as well as curves. I'm not going to get into the full functionality of all of those different capabilities, things that you can do, hints and tips. This is just to talk about what convergent modeling is. The nice thing about the convergent modeling kernel is that if I have a shape with a lot of complex depth and little angles and so on, maybe I have a, a scan of a logo or I have a scan of some uh, image that I want to use that has some depth. I carved something out on a piece of clay or I carved something out on a piece of wood and I want to use that scan sort of as an imprint onto a solid and this is a good place to do uh, to use that now um, since this model is already in it's already it was already imported in in a previous version i'm just going to leave everything as is the issue here now becomes let me go ahead and show this so this is a solid body you can see i have an extrude if i go into home and i try to do anything with this solid body let's say subtract if i try to use you'll notice this STL or the scan, it will not allow me to select it. I can pick the solid, but I can't pick the STL. So with the convergent modeling, I'm going to go into reverse engineering and I'm going to use a tool called convert facet body. This is going to allow me to pick my STL and I want to convert it into a convergent model. I'm going to select OK. As soon as I do that, you'll notice the color changes. You'll see there's my convergent body. Now, if I go into my subtract functionality, I can pick this convergent model as my target, and I can pick this solid as my tool. I'm going to get some messages saying, hey, an extract body feature will be created automatically from analytic input, and we'll talk about some of these things later on. But this is just to give you an idea, again, of what convergent modeling is all about. I'm going to select OK, and you'll see I've subtracted this out of my convergent body. So this is still an STL. So now I have the capability of generating geometry attached to an STL. So if I have to use a new STL, maybe I have a new scan, I can import that new scan and replace one scan for another and so on. The other, the other capabilities that I have, let me go ahead and hide this. If I come in here now, and I were to go into a curve. Let me just simply draw a line. And OK. If I now project this onto here and in this direction, you'll notice that I have a projected curve that is now linked. If I come in here and make a modification to this, you'll see that that modification updates because it is now going up onto a convergent body. Now you've seen me use uh, curves on SDLs in the past and I didn't have history. With the convergent modeling, it, I now have that capability of um, putting history onto these things. So again, if I have an STL that I'm using as a reference, for instance, to drive some curves through, to drive a surface through, and uh, I wanna switch one STL out for a new scan, I can do that and my curves will update. I may have a little bit of work to do to clean things up, to get things to connect properly, but 
now that I have that capability of introducing history into the model, it makes things a lot easier. And that's the whole purpose of convergent modeling is to take an STL, whether you have something imported new in NX11 as a convergent body or something that's old, like in this case, this was imported in NX9, to, uh, um, to convert it into a convergent model. So now you can use those STLs as if it's an integral part of the modeling process rather than having something that's uh, an insertion in there that doesn't have history or something that sort of deviates off of a normal modeling process that, you, uh, that you're in the middle of or something along those lines. So that's convergent modeling, the basics behind it, and I'll be making several videos about what you can and some of the limitations of convergent modeling as we go through. Thank you.